This is our wild Friday night learning how to yodel. <laughs> So, I am absolutely elated right now. I just finished The Poppy War, which is a 500 page behemoth fantasy dense novel. My goal getting through it was that as soon as I finish it, I get to start The Wicked King by Holly Black. It does not come out until January, but hefty shout out to Nahid for letting me borrow her copy. I will link her channel down below. She's one of my favorite humans on the planet and even more so because she's letting me borrow this. Hello, ma'am. You scared me. Oh, sorry. So bad. I'm watching the kiss kissing booth. Yeah, I've never seen the kissing booth. I just came here to read because I'm lonely and need interaction. I literally am on page four. Let's see how this goes. I heard there's sex. I'm so excited. <laughs> Allow me to interrupt your viewing pleasure in order to tell you about our sponsor for the day. I was stoked when Scribd contacted me because as you've seen in previous vlogs, I already use Scribd. It's the main place that I go to to read ebooks and audiobooks. Their pitch is that they're a website comparable to Audible, but they're much cheaper. So they have a selection of audiobooks, ebooks, documents, sheet music, just for $9 a month. For being so cheap, I think it's definitely worth it and I already use the service. And for the price, they have a lot of the books that I want to read available. For example, if you wanted to go over and read the entire Shatter Me series, they have all four books books. So if you've been meaning to read Shatter Me but you don't own it and you don't have a library near you, it's on Scribd. You can click the link down below and get started because as you all know it's my favorite book of all time. And then if you finish it they have the rest of the series there too. If you're interested in reading Shatter Me or any of the other thousands of books that are on the website, I have a link that you can click that you can get 30 free days. And like I said, I've been using Scribd since 2015. So I genuinely think it's worth it and I'm so glad they could sponsor me. So use that link down below, read Shatter Me, my favorite book of all time, or try out any of their other books. And let me know if you like it because it's it's my fave. <laughs> and to prove that I actually love Scribd, let me show you. I actually have it on my phone in my books folder right here. Scribd is front and center right here. There's all the books that I have marked in my saves that I want to read. You can't see any of those, but they have a ton. So thank you Scribd for sponsoring this video once again. Good morning. Good morning. It's actually 3 p.m. I want to start off this vlog by telling you guys a TBR situation. My reading pace at this point is two to four books per week. So I have two books here that I'm currently reading that I hope to finish this week. The first book I'm currently reading is The Bassoon King by Rain Wilson, which is his memoir about how he got into acting. And I am on page 242 of this, so I have like 40 pages left. Listening to it on audio, I'll probably get to that tonight. I also just just started The Wicked King by Holly Black, which is the second book in The Cruel Prince. I don't know how many books it's gonna be. Hopefully this one doesn't have a cliffhanger because this one's not even out yet. So it's gonna be a hefty wait. This series is about this girl who was born in the human world but then is abducted and taken to the fairy world because of family drama. I'm currently on page 50 out of 300. For class, I am reading different selections of Sherlock Holmes books, but all of them are just random short stories. And then I'm still reading Emerson for my American Romantic Literature class, which is Reading party. <laughs> I am on page 56. Before I start this clip, do y'all like my little reading corner? I've had this little greenery that I needed to hang up, but I didn't know where to put it. Moved my lights over here. Added this string of paper here. How's it looking? Ooh, also I got this necklace. Do you like it? All day I've been doing a little bit of reading, doing a lot of sitting around. As I was doing that, I finished my audiobook for The Bassoon King. I think I'm gonna rate this four stars. Of celebrity memoirs, this is one of my new favorites. I think sometimes celebrity memoirs can take on this air of, oh, I've grown to be so successful. Let me tell you about how I got to be successful. And they just try and be witty and they try and emulate the way that they behave on camera, but in reality, it just comes off as four and cheesy. I thought that Rain's book was very genuine. It was down to earth. It felt like he was talking with me and not at me. I really liked all of it, even though I was only excited to read it because I wanted to learn more about The Office. It was actually really interesting to see his upbringing and going to college and going to acting school. I had no idea Rain Wilson did Broadway before he went to The Office. Highly recommend this if you like The Office and you're interested in Rain Wilson's life. But I also made my way through The Wicked King. I'm on page 116 of that. Oh boy. Oh look, if I do this, I look like I'm in a forest. Where's Cardin? 
I'm very biased because I just I love Cardin so much and I'm like where is he? So any scenes that he's not in it can be difficult to focus. It is delivering on a lot of angst. It's not a five star amazing series for me but it is superior to a lot of books that I read. Oh lord I just woke up. I have work at noon so like 45 minutes but I want to do a quick update before then. Last night I was reading The Wicked King before I went to bed. I made it to page 150. The scene that I finished before I went to bed. It's just everything I wanted and I love it. Being real, a lot of it talks about war politics, Jude having to be a strategist, and all of that isn't really that interesting to me. And at first I thought it was because I just cared about Jude and Cardin's relationship and I wasn't really there for drama with opposing kingdoms. And then I realized it's because Holly Black never takes the time to actually flesh out characters from other places. <laughs> so it's like we get so much description for Jude and Cardin and we care about them and they're awesome, but we never get a fleshed out description of anyone from any other kingdom or if we do it just makes them seem like bad <laughs> or not interesting or like I don't want to support them so sometimes when I read my brain goes off into the clouds because I just want to get back to the characters that I love but I'm pushing through it oh we stand hey guys wait I have a question how many years after a book comes out can you spoil depends on what it is because if it's this book if it's a series that everyone's read you're fine uh-huh or if it's no one would care if they got spoiled. I think at this point no one cares if they get spoiled. Or right. Not. No one's like, man, I was yeah. really looking forward to reading that book next month. Damn it, it was <laughs> on my TBR. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's me and Nicole back with another reading update. You want to turn on that lamp and it'll give you good lighting? Oh, you? we love good lighting. Bitch. I know all witty novel secrets. <laughs> witty novels. Should I go to your shot now? No, you're good. My thighs are burning. That was my excuse to leave. Oh. Bye, everyone. Last time I spoke with y'all, I was reading the Duff, and I would like to proudly, proudly. I don't know how to get out of this shot. I'm sorry. Being a second. shot girl. We want to enthusiastically say that we are finished reading the Duff, and it's over. Woohoo! Now, no offense to people who love the Duff. Full offense to people who love the Duff. Personally, I love the movie and maybe i would like the book if i didn't hate the main character that was my book review my first book review oh i'm gonna cry <laughs> so what we're reading now it was picked by the lovely roommate that's me new moon by stephanie meyer we reread twilight this summer and we remembered how good it is superior we decided that we were going to read the whole series we read it all. And so here we have New Moon. The favorite, the best book in the entire series. False. Best movie. <laughs> For all the Team Jacob lovers out there, we love it. It's good so far. We are on page 53. Bella just had her birthday party and got a paper cut. We all know how that went. You about to fall in love with Jacob. Right. So anyways, that's my reading update. Any Anything, Whitney? Personally, I have the opposite of all of your opinions. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Bye, Felicia. Give us a fun x-ray fact. Oh, um... <laughs> the first x-ray was made in 1895, and this is it. X-ray fact. How's it going? Good to hear. This morning I started Forgive Me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick. I am now 160 pages... Shh. Whitney's vlogging. Whitney's vlogging. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what a first thing. Whoa. That was all? You didn't have anything to say? I'm in the middle of The Wicked King, which is so good, but I reached this part and I needed a break because the part was real good. So I've had to just sit on it for like two days because I have to recover. So I started this instead more than halfway through. I anticipate I'll finish this tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to finish this before I go back to The Wicked King, but it's just a change of pace and I'm really enjoying it. It's about this kid who's depressed and so he's decided that he's going to kill his best friend or ex best friend and then kill himself and it chronicalizes the day that he goes on his last day of school and like saying goodbye to people giving them presents like very telltale signs of depression and suicidal behavior i don't know how it's gonna end there's so much happening they're all having fun without me and my mascara is smeared because i've been crying laughing for the past hour do something funny he's gonna try to read a book that's funny <laughs> should we introduce you to the vlog my name is wilma balls feeding you now my bad, no, 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 no. My first name is Suggin' D's, and my last name is Nuts. 
Yeah, that'd be good. No. <laughs> you asked for this. This is what you requested. Yeah, we're cutting this out. <laughs> you gonna cut that out? Please don't step on my body. Please don't step on my body. I'm so sorry. This is not what it looks like. I'm practicing the scene that I'm in a dragon. <laughs> We need to update things that Doreen has done because we haven't talked about Doreen since she like sh calendar? shut Kaylin's door. So in my room, I heard the noise of a water bottle being dropped and I was like, that's weird, I don't have any water bottles in my room. I came in from class the next day and there was a water bottle under my bed. Also, the noise on your door. Oh yeah, then a couple nights later, we all just said goodnight to everyone and I was in my room. There's this huge bang on my door. I thought like Kaylin was pranking me or something and threw something at my door or knocked, but I ignored it because I thought it was just one of them. The next day I asked who pranked me and no one had done it. It was so loud I jumped. So this one is up to interpretation. <laughs> It was gravity. One day, Julia was gone. Whitney was in her room. Veronica was in her room. I was in my room. So we were all in our room, chilling, having a good old day. And we hear this loud boom, boom, boom. We're like, what's that? Veronica comes out of her room and was like, I come out of my room. And we come and look, and this calendar had fallen off the wall. Landed right there, face up. No possible explanation. Wait, it's not focused. Wait, there it goes. Yeah. Now watch me uh, do it again. Now watch. Oh wait. Now watch Boo. me whip. Now watch me nay nay. Now watch me whip. Whip. Watch me. What if Whitney's oh, reflection oh, stayed in the mirror? Stop it. I'm done, bro. <laughs> I was not expecting this, but I just finished. Forgive me, Leonard Peacock. I didn't think I'd read it all in one night, but it's really addicting. I started it on audio, which was fantastic, but then I could just read it faster physically. You can see the mascara stains of where I cried, but it's just interesting that this book can make you feel so uncomfortable yet touched at the same time. Like, on the one hand, Leonard Peacock is not a good character, but on on the other hand, he's mentally ill. He's had a lot happen to him that's unfair. So the balance between those two just plays out really interestingly. And I just love the supporting characters in this book. I love the way that he thinks and his narration style. This was a really quick read that just touched me. The only solid criticism I have for it is that the ending wraps up too quickly. This definitely could use an epilogue in my opinion. Like it's so abrupt to the point that I thought I missed a couple pages or like there might be a sequel or something. This this book was just sad and I think it's a good reminder to just be nice to people because you never know what someone's going through on a day-to-day -day basis. So yeah, I think I'm gonna give this like four, four and a half stars and I unintentionally painted my nails red to match it. Also, I cut my thumb tonight on a bottle of olive oil. A boo-boo for Boo Boo the Fool. I still have to continue The Wicked King, but listen, my heart is just not ready to continue after the last scene that I left out on. I'm just very sensitive. Oh God, I wish it were out today so I could talk about it. It is lunchtime, my friends. I take you in the kitchen while I make a sandwich. Today I have work from nine uh, until one o'clock, so it's just after one. I'm starving. I'm gonna make me a snack. But I wanna tell you about the book I started this morning. Yeah, that feeling when our kitchen's so tiny, I have to put my stuff up there because I'm the only one who can reach it. This morning I wanted to start an audiobook while I got ready because I just wanted a new fun thing happening on audio. So I decided to start this book. <laughs> I can't recall the title right now. It's a nonfiction book of essays. I think the author like works at Buzzfeed or something. It's just essays about her life and kind of how everything's a hot mess, but it's fine, you know? It's fun. It's something to hear while I'm getting ready. I feel like that's how most of my audiobook reads are. It's just like I listen to them to fill the time because I often like goof off when I listen to audiobooks and I forget to listen. And so there's lots of audiobooks in the world that are great. I'm just a terrible listener. So I really only pick up audiobooks that I can sort of tune out. And I don't mean tune out as like I don't listen to it, but I'm not gonna listen to a book that I think I might give five stars because it's just not the best way for me to absorb that book. My camera's about to die. I'm gonna make this sandwich, then I have to go back to school at three, so festivities. I just have to say something, this will be quick. I don't know what the Bridget Jones diary is and at this point I'm too afraid to ask. That's all. Okay, actually I need your opinion. I bought this mustard color sweatshirt tonight. I put on these real glasses. Do I look like an art hoe? That's the vibe I'm going for, but I don't know. 30 minutes till American Horror Story time and I still have 40 pages of my homework to read. Okay, for realsies though, we're reading Walden by Thoreau and I was like, oh, it's gonna be the worst. It's so good. <laughs> Time. 
<laughs> Hi vlog, it's me Whitney. <laughs> I've changed a little bit since the last time you saw me. Minutes before the camera turned on, Kaylin and I were talking, wow, okay bye Kaylin. <laughs> we were talking about how great New Moon is because Edward's not in it. It's not that Edward is trash, even though he is. It's the fact that them together is like, so cringy. They're perfect together because they are both, like they're just both like, ugh. Yes. Bella's just too whiny. I miss him. I love him. We I'm met gonna, yesterday and I love him. I'm gonna sit in this chair. He's a vampire and I wanna be a vampire months. too. I'm gonna push my dad away because I'm helping him. I'm trying to say Oh, that. I'm so pissed that I never liked Bella. Hated her in the book. Back in the day. Oh, hated her in the movie. Look at Whitney's face. <laughs> so is New Moon your least favorite book? Of all time? No, of that series. Of all time! Because <laughs> you love dogs, and so it has wolves in it. Well, here's the thing. I haven't read them since I was a hot 14. <laughs> really? I mean, same, but I just figured you would have reread them. It's not Shatter Me. Okay, listen. <laughs> Yes, I'm still going for that art ho aesthetic even though it's very early in the morning. I just finished reading one of Thoreau's essays for class. I said this earlier, but Thoreau, excellent. I'm kind of tempted to read this. I guess you'll find out in the next clip what I end up doing. I keep telling myself I'm not gonna update if I don't have a meaningful update to give you because often I just want to turn on the camera and talk out of my butt, which is boring and I end up cutting out like an hour of footage. But this time I do have a reading update, so sit back down. I made it to page 228 of The Wicked King last night, which is quite a meaningful way through. The problem I'm encountering right now is that if you know my tastes in reading, you know that I can't do witches and I can't do mermaids. I have nothing against them. Feel free to indulge in your own stories that have those elements. I can do high fantasy and I can imagine dragons. I can imagine magic. I can imagine, I don't even know, like all those fantasy elements. But for some reason, just like witchcraft, I, my brain doesn't understand and mermaids. My brain is like underwater what? And this book is now set underwater for the past couple chapters. And I'm just like, I don't know what it is. I think it's the physics of like floating, knowing the panic of not being able to breathe underwater, but all the characters are breathing underwater. I'm like, why are you not freaking out right now? I don't know why I can't handle that. So I'm just kind of reading it uncomfortably and hoping that we can get back to the land. I weirdly, stupidly said that I would cover for one of my coworkers shifts tonight. I have an essay due on Tuesday that I really want to finish tonight and tomorrow. Then I have some meetings tomorrow. So I don't know when I'm going to finish this. Hopefully not tonight, because I need to do my essay instead of this. <laughs> oh no, I ruined my entire look of the day. I was wearing these as well, and it was like, ooh, I'm just a little old student in class. My pot pie is ready. I just finished The Wicked King. I've forgotten how to be a human. Why'd you have to do this to me? I can't believe you've done this. I had like 90 pages left. So I just hunkered down and I was like, I'll be fine, I'll read it. Narrator voice, she wasn't fine. This one's not even out yet. And I already want the next one. I'm somewhere toward between, oh, and, <laughs> and right now the <laughs> is winning out. This is what my final annotated copy looks like. Yes, I put five sticky tabs on one quote because when you see a light in the darkness, you have to take it. I don't think I can talk about this coherently right now. I just wanted to give you my initial reaction after I finished it. I'm gonna snuggle this blanket. Who am I? Do we even have a title for the third book, let alone any synopsis or cover? Oh, no. I'll vlog tomorrow and tell you my final thoughts. Good afternoon, and welcome to this episode of Final Thoughts with Whitney Atkinson. Oh lord, I'm soaking wet because it's raining like a monster outside, but let's talk. As you saw, the ending of The Wicked King was a whole experience. When Jude and Carden were in this book, five stars. When they weren't, three stars. I love Jude. I love the whole storyline of this human girl in this world that's not designed for her trying to survive. And it's so empowering and it just resonates with me so much. But most of the time, I have no clue what she's talking about. We need a character index. We need more backstory on the lands. We need just more description of her life in the islands. I know like elves are known for being like 
prankish and they just trick each other so it's very much like playful and childlike but this book often just comes off as juvenile just some of the characters and some of the conflicts and some of the spells just make it sound silly and there's something about that that I can't get past and at this point I think it's just personal preference that this type of fairy world just comes off as juvenile to me and therefore trying to put it in the back set of this really dark world with a war and this character who's constantly getting shot at and people hate her and are torturing her. Sometimes it'll be really dark and then something will happen that just is so absurd. Like they're trying to have a really serious scene but then someone turns into a cat. It just is a little silly to me and it's totally a personal preference at this point but it's a reason why I can't give this series a full five stars alongside the fact that it just needs more development. But like I said, love this series as a superior enemies to lovers story. I can't spoil it so I'm not going to say more about the relationship but I just think you know what I will say I was expecting more. <laughs> we shall see in book three which doesn't come out until I'm 40 years old in 2020. <sighs> I hope you all enjoyed this reading vlog that was basically just me reading The Wicked King. <laughs> I would like to end this vlog by apologizing for looking like a wet rat half the time but it'd be like that often. <laughs>